Now, fewer people than ever before are considering starting new businesses in South Africa. This according to the 2023 Global Entrepreneurship Monitor South Africa report, which shows that the country's early stage entrepreneurial activity has declined to below pre-pandemic levels. Natanya Meyer, who's Associate Professor at UJ and co-author of the Stellenbosch Business School South Africa Entrepreneurship Report, joins us with greater perspective around the findings of this report and what it means for South Africa's entrepreneurial landscape moving forward. Natanya, thank you so much for being with us uh, this afternoon. Just talk to us about uh, this entrepreneurial landscape landscape and activity that has declined opposed to COVID-19. Yes, I think we need to understand the whole COVID pandemic sort of had a massive shock, not only on South Africa, but on a global level. And what happened with the TIA or the early stage entrepreneurial activity during this pandemic time was it spiked to an all time high. Now, the, the Probably the only explanation for this is people were in lockdown, they were homebound. A lot of people couldn't do their normal jobs because of this. A lot of jobs were lost and people were also retrenched and fired. And also, so, so this obviously was the push factors. So people started businesses out of necessity because there was no other option. And then if we look at the pull factors also, ease of access to market entry was also easier during this time because almost everything went online. So for a lot of people who might have considered opening a business because of uh, seeing opportunity, this was the perfect time to do it because everything went online and people sort of shifted their minds from going to a traditional brick and mortar setup, which obviously we know is much more expensive to set up in business terms than doing an online thing. And this obviously happened also. And unfortunately, what we have seen post COVID as things are sort of going back to normal and people are referring, re returning back to normal employment within the normal market setup. Um, a lot of these necessity jobs or necessity entrepreneurs cease to exist. And there wasn't that spike or that um, high peak that we saw. Unfortunately, what we did see is it sort of dropped almost to the lowest it's ever been in the 23 years that it has been tracked. And this potentially could also be still as a downswing or a down trend from the COVID pandemic. We all know that these things are a little bit in a lag. So hopefully we can see that this rate increases again from this year and so forth. I must ask you, uh, you know, what, what to make of the fact that uh, the highest motive among South Africans to become an entrepreneur is necessity and a need for a job. It also tells me that it's survivalist in nature. And I'm wondering if that also uh, does not limit the trajectory of the businesses that do come to fruition. Yes, definitely. As we know, when people start businesses out of necessity, it's barely or it's merely just to stay alive and to make ends meet on a day to day basis. These are not normally or typically our high growth businesses that will, you know, start employing additional people and um, literally contributing to economic growth and development by, by other things they are also contributing. Um, these are also the type of businesses that as soon as a better opportunity uh, comes along their way, they will then stop this business or just keep it as a sideline hustle. Um, I think we need to remember if we look at the context of South Africa and the high unemployment, high poverty rates, um, necessity driven entrepreneurship isn't necessarily bad because this is the thing that keeps a lot of South Africans um, alive and have even if it's just food on the table for the day. But I think that the issue comes in where or who of these necessity entrepreneurs really have good ideas that can grow or that can um, mature into a better or more, more sustainable business. And this is where we need help. Government institutions, incubators, mentors, all of these things to delve into this necessity driven entrepreneurs, find the ones that can actually grow into bigger ones, take their hand, help them and get them to move into the next phases of business growth as we want to see it in the longer term. I'm actually keen to speak a little bit more about that, about what an enabling environment looks like. Of course, we know load shedding is an issue. We know a transit is an issue. But what else could we be doing, Latanya, to bolster entrepreneurial activity or even the entrepreneurial spirit? Because I think it's also a matter okay. of just having an enterprising spirit within South Africa. Yes, this is something close to my heart. And I think this is something that really all South Africans from all levels of government, private sector, education, everyone should really focus on. If we look at the term ecosystem, think of a little fish dam. You need water, you need oxygen, you need soil, you need plants, you need sunlight. 
uh, or sunlight, all of that needs to be there for the little fish in this pond to survive. If any of these elements are not there or lesser or more so, then, you know, it becomes difficult for this fish to survive. And this is what I see as entrepreneurship. I see the entrepreneurs as being the fishes in this big pond. And what are these elements that needs them or that they need to survive and thrive in, in this environment? Now, you've mentioned the, the load shedding issue. I think that is one of the main things. And obviously, that falls under the bigger picture of infrastructure, which we do see um, as definitely a need and it needs to be um, really uh, paid attention to so that we can provide that to, to businesses. But some of the other things that needs to be in this ecosystem includes access to finance. I think entrepreneurs struggle to get finance purely because a lot of finance institutions only provides finance based on collateral and not on the potential of this business or the idea. So that's something. Government support. We need support in forms of entrepreneurial programs, um, taxes and bureaucracy needs to be looked at for small businesses so that they are a little bit more, so that they can easier access the market. Um, there's a lot of red tape hindering businesses from actually starting in a more formal way. Education is a huge problem. You mentioned this whole thing about social and cultural uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. And I feel that we're not starting at ground roots. We need to teach the youngsters who are the future of tomorrow and of our country to think entrepreneurial, not even just for starting a business, because the whole characteristic or mindset of an entrepreneur can help you in day to day activity. Then other things like um, research development, internal market burdens, regulation, etc. Those are also some of the things. But I think the main point is we need to see government come to the party. We need more ease of access to finance. We need Intra, um, better entrepreneurial education from a low level already, and then obviously infrastructure, etc. And if those things are in place, the fish will swim and survive and make babies and all of these things that they have to do. <laughs> so it's a new routine for the fish. And Tanya, it's been great to hearing from you. Thank you so much uh, for unpacking this for us. A very important uh, one uh, this afternoon. That was Natanya Mayer, Associate Professor at UJ and co-author of the Stellenbosch Business School Essay Entrepreneurship Report.